So what determines if a planet can keep its atmosphere? So let's imagine we have a planet. And it's got an atmosphere. Let's zoom in on that. So let's zoom in somewhere over here. And you can see all the molecules in the atmosphere. And they're all moving around because of the temperature. Unless the atmosphere is at absolute zero, they'll be jiggling around. And let's what would allow an atom to escape? Well, normally when they jiggle around, they don't get very far before they bang into another molecule. So that might bang into this one, which might bang into that one, and so on and so forth. But when you get up to the top of the atmosphere, the atoms are getting few and far between. So if one's heading upwards, it might actually be able to escape. But if it's going slowly, it'll fly out, and then arc round and come back down again. So what we need is atoms near the top of the atmosphere that are going so fast they can actually escape into space. So, what would determine the speed of an atom? So we've got two questions. First of all, what determines how fast these atoms are going? And secondly, how does it compare to the escape velocity, the velocity needed to escape into space? Now, for the first one, we have to use the result from statistical thermodynamics. You just have to take this on trust unless you're familiar with that subject. Um, Statistical thermodynamics, as worked out in the 19th century, tells you that the average kinetic energy, half mv squared, of a atom or molecule in some gas is equal to three halves the Boltzmann constant, which is 1.38 by 10 to the minus 23, times the temperature. So what that means is that the velocity is equal to the square root of 3 k t over the mass of the particle in question. How fast is that? Well, you can see that it will depend on what atom in the same atmosphere, let's say an atmosphere contains you know, oxygen and hydrogen, um, ox an oxygen atom weighs 16 times more than a hydrogen atom, and oxygen usually goes around in pairs, O2, so in fact it's 32 times more. So the speed of oxygen in the atmosphere would be root 32 less than the speed of hydrogen in the same atmosphere. But let's try this for the Earth. Temperature is around 290 Kelvin, about 17 centigrade. And let's take hydrogen. So for let's assume there was hydrogen in the Earth's atmosphere originally then the mass of that is 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Boltzmann's constant is 1.3 over 10 to the minus 23. Plug those all into here, and we get a velocity of about 2.7 kilometers per second. Very fast. Your bullet might do one kilometer a second from a high velocity rifle. If we plug in oxygen, say, or nitrogen. So oxygen um, has an atomic mass of 16, but it always goes around in the form of O2. So the mass here is actually that of a molecule, which is 2 times 16. So, so for hydrogen, that's velocity. For oxygen, it's going to be much lower, and that comes out as about 0.5 kilometers per second. Still very fast. This is actually why air pressure is so strong. You're being constantly banged into your skin, molecules travelling at the speed twice as fast as a bullet, and that's uh, the cumulative effect of all those impacts is what causes air pressure. Okay, so that's the first part. We now know roughly how fast the molecules are going. You can see that if the temperature is high, they'll go fast, and the lighter molecules go faster than the heavy molecules. How fast do you need to go to escape? Well, once again, let's take our planet. We'll assume the molecule is going straight up at some distance from the centre of the planet R. This is now a straightforward potential kinetic energy problem. So to begin with, its kinetic energy is one half m v squared, and it's that's got to be overcome the gravitational potential energy. So that's got to be more than g mass of the planet mass of the particle over R, the gravitational potential energy. So if it's got this, it'll be able to escape. So let's rearrange. So we uh, get that 
mass of the particle cancels this time. Take the 2 over to this side, so you end up with v squared equals 2gm over r. Take the square root of both sides, you end up with v equals root 2g mass of the planet over r. Now let's try this for the Earth. Um, we'll use r of the top of the atmosphere, so the surface is about 6,400 kilometers from the middle of the Earth, so r, this gives me about, let's put 100 kilometers up, so 6,500 kilometers, roughly speaking, doesn't make much difference. Um, the mass of the Earth is 6 by 10 to the 24 kilograms, g is gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, plug that all in and so it comes out as about 7.8 kilometers per second. So that's an interesting number. It's about three times the speed of the hydrogen atoms and more than ten times as fast as oxygen molecules. So at the face value that would seem to imply that neither hydrogen nor oxygen could escape from the Earth. So we should have an atmosphere that's full of both hydrogen and oxygen. And given that hydrogen is so super abundant in the universe, that means our atmosphere should be mostly hydrogen, just like Jupiter's atmosphere. That would be a pretty inflammable combination. However, you have to bear in mind that not all atoms and molecules move at the average speed. We worked out that the average speed of hydrogen was uh, 2.7 kilometers per second, but some hydrogen atoms are moving much faster than the average and some will be going much slower. And it turns out that a appreciable fraction will be going at three times the speed of the average, and they will therefore be able to escape. So over time, a tiny fraction of the hydrogen can escape and keep escaping over billions of years until there's none left. But with oxygen, it would have to be going more than ten times as fast as the average, and essentially no molecules are doing that, so the oxygen can stay. So it looks like uh, this can explain why some planets have hydrogen atmospheres and some don't.